Hi, it's Natasha and Khalil, and we are the co-hosts of Woke, Woke and Free. Free. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to our 56th episode of Woke and Free. If you've been tuning in every week for Woke and Free Wednesday, you know that Woke and Free is all about being real and honest with each other and you. We talk about everything and anything that's important to us, to you, and the world, and nothing is off the table. In this episode, we're talking all about what is the real effect of global warming. But before we dive deep into this subject, we have this subject, we have a couple of ground rules to cover. First, have you subscribed to Woken Free on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, plus there's several other platforms that we're on. You'll find all of that on wokenfree.com. Second, have you shared an episode recently? If not, sharing is caring. Don't keep us as your dirty little secret. Share with your friends and family. And I think this episode could be a great episode to share, so please do. And then another thing is we'd love to hear from you on social media. Slide into our DMs. Holler at us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Woken Free. And then lastly, are you interested in reviewing our show? If so, like I said earlier, you can find all the different platforms that we're on on WokenFree.com. So please go ahead and review our show and share your thoughts with uh, us about kind of what you think the show is all about. Each week we like to share a little bit about us before we dive into the topic for the episode. Last week we shared whether we prefer a fork or a spoon. This week we're sharing... When arriving at a destination in a car, do you drive around for a couple of minutes, or do you take the first spot you see, even if it's far away? I see. We're dipping down real low on your <laughs> interest meter. Oh, wow. <laughs> really, Khalil? Real deep, uh, inquisitive, sexy stuff here. Okay. It's good to know. Uh, so are you a woman or a man, essentially? Are you asking? No, these but are personal shares. <laughs> these are, this is not a scenario. Gender specific? There's nature. no gender specific. You this don't feel like certain genders would make a decision based no, on No, this that? is a person to person thing. It's a personal preference. All right. Uh, I believe, now what you're saying, okay, so when arriving at destination, do you drive around or just take the first spot? Yeah. You see, uh, I would say for me personally, I would drive around because you don't want to assume that you can't get closer to a destination. You don't want to uh, assume that you have to park really far and, and not necessarily look to see if you can get some something better. So I would drive around. Yeah, I agree. I, I would look for a good spot. I wouldn't take a spot just because it's just because the first one I see. I would find the closest one possible and... If it's taking too long, then I'll just take a far spot. But mm -hmm. I definitely make an attempt to get a close spot at least. Gotcha. Yep. So now that we've shared that riveting information. Uh... Yeah, it was a burning <laughs> question that I know some listeners have. Yeah, uh, yearning for that info, eh? Yeah. Yep. Excellent. We Excellent. finally satiated their thirst. Jesus. <laughs> I think with that, we can get this party train rolling and uh, start off with an even sexier question. What is global warming? <laughs> wow, that's just like my question that I asked for the personal share. Well, but instead, mm -hmm. let's, what I'll do is I'll, let's go to National Geographic because okay. they might have some more information on this. And they kind of just described like effects of global warming, like what we mm -hmm. see of it. And they're saying it's what causes glaciers to melt, it causes sea levels to rise, forests to die, and mm. wildlife animals to scatter about. It causes changes to the earth, the earth's long-term weather patterns. So they just describe, you know, global warming and its effects, okay. and essentially, is that is what global warming is. It's all those effects combined. Gotcha. And again, as always, guys, you can always find our articles that we're referring to on WokenFree.com. Uh, so I found some interesting info on NRDC. So they say simply, it's a simple definition of global warming. And yes, it's really happening. Over the past 50 years, the average global temperature has increased at the fastest rate in recorded history. And experts see the trend as accelerating all but one of the 16 hottest years in NASA's 
134 year record have occurred since 2000. And the climate change engineers have argued that there has been a pause or slowdown in rising global temperatures, but several recent studies, including a 2015 paper published in the journal Science, has disproved this claim. And scientists say that unless we curb global warming emissions, the average U.S. temperatures could increase by up to 10 degrees Fahrenheit over the next century. So it's getting hotter. And like you talked about, there's going to be <laughs> devastating effects because... It's getting hot, hot like fire. Well, yeah, we're already seeing the effects. Mm -hmm. What actually causes global warming? Okay, well, back again to NRDC because they had some really cool info. Global warming occurs when carbon dioxide, so CO2, and other air pollutants and greenhouse gases collect in the atmosphere and absorb sunlight and solar radiation that have bounced off the Earth's surface. And normally this radiation would escape into space, but these pollutants, which can last for years to centuries in our atmosphere, trap the heat and then cause the planet to get hotter. So that's what's known as the greenhouse effect. So essentially we keep emitting these pollutants, which normally the heat would like, you know, go out to space, but because we have all this stuff in our air, it's uh, our atmosphere rather, it's like being trapped and then thus warming up the earth. And then uh, NRDC explains, in the U.S., the burning of fossil fuels to make electricity is the largest source of heat-trapping pollution. It's producing about 2 billion tons of CO2 every year, and coal-burning power plants are by far the biggest polluters. So the country's second largest source of carbon pollution is the transportation sector, which generates about 1.7 billion tons of CO2 emissions a year. And then uh, they go on to share some other inf like interesting data. But again, you can find all of that on WokenFree.com. Yeah, I just want to go back to the greenhouse effect. Is mm -hmm. It's that when the gases are in the atmosphere, what happens is it traps all the heat that basically came off from uh, light being absorbed by the planet. Mm -hmm. So what happens is light is able to pass through these gases and then the earth absorbs the uh, the light and gives off heat. But the heat is supposed to escape, but that gas traps the heat. Mm -hmm. So that's what causes just an overall increase in temperatures. As the as we add more of these gases to the atmosphere, more and more heat is trapped, and light is continuously passes through. So it's not like a smog effect where it like blocks out the sun or everything. It's gotcha. it's like it's letting light in, but it's just not letting the heat out, and that's what's really like causing some issues. And hot, hot, hot. And just to let you know, United States is not the worst with the um, oh, of course, I mean, pollution. I know that China, China has given off a yeah. lot of pollution. They're definitely mm -hmm. emitting a lot of CO2. But there's also like billions of people there, and we don't even have billions of people here. So yeah. we are, uh, <laughs> we still need to get it. To, everybody needs to get it together. But yeah, I think everyone, everybody's contributing. It's mm -hmm. not like one country is the only blame. And also animals, animals emit CO2, right? And so, like, they're ga like I think yeah. cows are, like, huge proponents of emitting uh, their, in their, you know, gas that they release or whatever, so. But I don't think those are the biggest sources. No, definitely not. Just uh, the animals on their driving own. driving around and uh, buying our big cars and, and burning up all that oil is uh, definitely a problem. But what would you say are the biggest concerns with global warming? Some that I found mentioned by NASA were that frost-free and growing season will actually lengthen. Mm -hmm. Increased rains in the U.S. will continue. Ah. And actually, there will be more droughts in the southwest of the U.S., but heat waves everywhere else will actually increase. So you'll wow. have heat waves, like, everywhere. <laughs> Hurricanes mm -hmm. will become stronger and more intense. Mm -hmm. And they estimate that the sea level will actually rise by one to four feet by the year 2100. Goodbye, Manhattan. So yeah, that's pretty high. <laughs> that's pretty high, guys. The Arctic Ocean might may probably be like ice free in the summer by mid century, so there won't be oh, any wow. ice at the, you know that northern cap. So that's insane. Some extreme effects from uh, global warming. Yeah, I just also like I came across this article by the Union of Concerned Scientists. I love that. That just seems super, uh, like very concerning. Like not just scientists, but They're concerned. concerned scientists. Like shout out to the Union of Concerned Scientists. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, they essentially, it's, uh, on their site, they listed the same things you just talked about. Uh, it's the accelerating sea, le sea level rise, uh, longer and more damaging wildfire seasons for, and anyone who's ever experienced it can probably attest to how bad that really sounds. Uh, I mean, we even saw in California some of the things that have been happening recently uh, seem very drastic and long lasting. So that's really concerning. Definitely, you mentioned the heat waves. Uh, they also talked about costly and growing health impacts. So climate change has significant implications for our health, including increased air pollution and longer and more intense allergy seasons, which uh -oh. is not cool. Currently trying to breathe. So yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound super good. And then, of course, you mentioned earlier, heavier precipitation and flooding. Hello, Hurricane Sandy was not cool here in the no Northeast. I don't think anyone wants that uh, more frequently. And even Texas with the Hurricane I Harvey. Know, We're having yes. lots of bad hurricanes. And then Puerto Rico, yes. Definitely, yeah. A lot of places are being affected mm -hmm. by this. Why isn't global warming accepted by everyone? Ugh, man. <laughs> There's really one answer, but let's see. What do you think? 1,600 pencil and pencil. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. But no, no, we can't just blame Let's it, on, it on the orange I man. I want to find out. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't blame it on one person, but definitely blame it on one source. Uh, there's see a, what you, you, you okay, say. So, okay, so according to Verge, the Verge, uh, there's an article on there on WokenFree.com that you'll see. Uh, more than half of Americans seem to think that the climate change won't affect them personally and a poll and this this article is fairly recent they say that according to this new poll only 45 percent think that global warming will pose a serious threat in their lifetime and just 43 percent say they worry a great deal about climate change but it's already affecting us so it's weird that people are kind of thinking about this as if it's this far in the future situation instead of a, a current day crisis and then the article goes on to say a poll conducted by Gallup shows that many Americans perceive climate change as a distant problem, like I said. Uh, they also um, are more concerned about, like, I think things like their hospital bills or, like, current day bills than, than this environmental stuff. And I guess, again, I, I think it's because of uh, some of the things that we see in in press and some of the things that we see in politics and then also i guess maybe because it's not as tangible of a crisis maybe as other crises are like if you were to say hey there's no water in supermarkets that's something very tangible you can't yeah. reach for it you can't touch it right or if something becomes super expensive because the demand is too high but when you say hey our global climate temperatures are changing it's less tangible, right? So it's it's. I think it's because it's too conceptual to most people, as opposed to it being a real hard and fast kind of. And that impact. means they should deny it, though. Hmm? <laughs> that means they should deny it just because they can't understand it. No, but... they shouldn't. But it's interesting <laughs> See, that that's... psychologically, that's what people are doing. They'd rather think of it as non-existent because it's less tangible. But why do you think people uh, argue that it's like eh? It's kind of a thing, but maybe not. Well, Let's get some ice cream. Yeah, it, it's it's all down to one thing. It actually is just mm -hmm. politics. It's the mentality that my party says it's a hoax, so I believe we, I'm not going to do any research myself. I'm just going to go along with what they say. And this really is you true. You are blaming the orange man. <laughs> no, I'm not blaming him specifically. Well, you know, it's funny, though, because, all right, so I found this thing on U.S. News that they reported, like, in no November of 2008, the last Republican president. You remember that guy, right? Oh, Once he Lord. was, <laughs> when he was nearing the end of his term, more than half of the conservative Republicans actually accepted climate change was occurring. Mm -hmm. So the majority was like, oh yeah, climate change is real by mm -hmm. the end of his term. Okay. But, but then by January on the eve of President Barack Obama's inauguration, that share dropped to less than 30% and it hasn't gone mm. over 50% mark since then. So it's kind of like, oh, now that if the since the Democrats started pushing global warming as a big issue, then the Republicans all sudden, have to all yeah. all of a sudden go against it, including their biggest uh, fan. They have like these this fan girl called Fox News, and they they were the ones putting out all these little hoaxes. And I, I won't jump into them later, but I found a site that documented like 197 different things that they're saying and okay. the rebuttals. But okay. that and this is all coming. From all from these climate deniers who are actually mostly conservatives is is what we what what was found. 
So it's actually right. conservative people that believe in the not not believe in the global warming. All right, well, woke and free nation. If you happen to be a conservative, which it's okay if you no, are, that's, that's fine. We all have. I think we, me and Khalil, we were just talking about this. No one exists in one type of existence, right? I think you can be democratic or liberal and still ad- adhere to certain conservative ideas and vice versa. So, woke and free nation, we call upon you to actually in, enlighten us on your thoughts. Do you agree that whether or not you agree you think global warming is happening or not how does politics affect you how did it affect your decision we'd like to know so if you could share your thoughts with us on the episode on wokenfree.com we would greatly appreciate it because we want to know is that true for you or not well well, yeah because just in my research i mean i don't know if in yours I didn't see any, there was no scientific backing of no, climate, of, deni- of climate yeah. denial. I, would be like, no, the I mean, in the, in the last couple of years, they've given out concrete reports that global course, warming is real because legit. when it first, when it first started, you know, it was a theory, but now there's actually, there's more reports on it that actually have the data that anybody can read and make a decision. Yeah. So what's funny about the climate deniers is they just say stuff and they don't back it up with any sources or anything. So I can't take them seriously the until fact I see that they sources. They even have names of like climate denier. Like, are well, there's you... something called flat earthers too. So it's just like that. You get a crazy name because you life. you have a crazy idea in your head. Get your life together. <laughs> and they and they're probably hearing us and like these people. Look, they're taking everything at face value. Did you read the actual data? I've went through some of the. I've went through not every report, but some of the data. I've looked mm. at it just to see if it was real and if it like made sense. And it's there, like. The evidence is there, guys. Yeah, I mean, at 14, I started so working please. on a science project with NASA, uh, and it was all about uh, climate uh, change and studies, and we were working on looking at carbon storage research in Black Rock Forest here in New York. So I've spent my childhood <laughs> uh, being a part of this journey of trying to bring science to society and say, hey, this is an issue, this is really important, so uh hell's yeah it's real guys and if you if you really don't think it is tell us hit us up on wokenfree.com because we want to know why you don't think global warming is real and please provide us some evidence so maybe you can give us a point of view that we haven't otherwise have not seen anything (laughs) in in all the years of this climate dino i have not seen anything so so what do you think we need to do to really tackle this global warming crisis even this comes down to one thing. Drive a Prius. Are you joking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. I'm not giving up my car, yeah. Yeah, that's not, no. But there's a lot of, there's some people out there that say they're saving the planet with their Prius. Uh, no, they're they can just, have, they can have fun with that. I won't say what I'm about to say. Don't but. say it. Because, <laughs> because there's another thing that they should do that I wish you would do more often. Recycle. And that's, Definitely and the recycle. The fact that you try to throw me under the bus right there on air <laughs> is, I got you, sir. No, that was. I a, got you. Welcome oh, free day. It's not that I don't recycle. It's just I forget all the recyclable items. So what my husband can do if he's gravely interested in me being better at recycling is to provide a list of recyclable items and tape it to my office wall so that I can always review that when I'm about to throw things out and or provide uh, uh, some type of system that is easily allows me to throw out trash versus recycling in every location that I'm in, in my home. All right. That's all. All right. Yep. I'll just let you know, guys, <laughs> recycling, it does actually save money. It's not, it's not like we're spending more to recycle. You act, it actually saves companies money in the long run. National Geographic says we can actually also increase forest lands to capture the carbon dioxide that we emit. Oh, wow. As a, you know, another thing to help with global warming. And mm-hmm. then also we can just increase renewable resources like solar and wind power. Which I and, love, yeah. Which is, it's, there's That's drawback, cool. there's drawback to those, but you know, those are challenges that we got to look to overcome. Yeah. And the last thing they actually mentioned too is change the way we farm. So I guess there's, oh, interesting. it might have to do with the cows, maybe not allowing the cows just to... Don't, not allowing all that gas to escape, maybe Aww. sequestering the gas. I don't know, but Cheese. just making improvements in that can help as well, according to National Geographic. Woken Free Nation, if any of you happen to be involved in any of these areas, please tell us if you're heavily involved, what are you doing to tackle global warming? Uh, we'd like to know. Hit us up on WokenFree.com. 
So again, uh, I'd like to point to The Verge, which again, you can find all of our articles on WokenFree.com. They say it really comes down to motivating people to take action because yes, there are physical things that we all can do, but if you mentally do not believe something is imperative, then you will not, what? change your behavior. <laughs> so it starts from the mind before it become be, before it becomes a physical change in people's lives. So I think making the connection more real and tangible for people not only in this country but all over the world, I think is going to be a big part of us really tackling this because you know, are you really likely to, to get more into solar energy? Are you really likely going to change your whole farming industry if you don't believe this is real? Probably not. So, I agree with that sentiment from The Verge. <laughs> yeah, I mm -hmm. mean, that's just funny to be a, cli a climate denier. That's there's funny. a lot of them, though. Like, there's yeah, not, it's yeah. It's just very interesting. What are some misconceptions about global warming? Mm, okay. Well, yeah, there's a several that you actually can find out there. So, the WWF shares, like, ten misconceptions that you can check out on WokenFree.com. I'm just going to go through three of them because I really uh, thought these were interesting. First one out of the gate, CO2 is not a pollutant. It's a greenhouse gas which plants, crops, and trees need to grow. Uh, so th that's the misconception, right? And WWF says, you know, this is true, but in the context of climate change, this is misinformed, right? So yes, plants need CO2 for photosynthesis as humans need oxygen for respiration. In fact, the world's forests store and cycle huge amounts of carbon. However, there's a limit to the amount that they can that they can be stored in any given woodland area. And with deforestation increasing, this limits uh, it. This limit is getting lower. So CO2 itself is not really the problem with global warming or climate change. It is a part of the natural global ecosystem. The problem is caused by the quantity being released by human activity. There's been this level of CO2, there hasn't been this level of CO2 in the atmosphere for over 800,000 years. So our carbon emissions are contributing to the greenhouse effect, which is trapping the heat and making the earth warmer. So just clearing that the science piece of it up for people is one misconception. Another one they mention, climate change has been here at least 5 million years. You fools. <laughs> is the, you fools. Uh, <laughs> you fools. <laughs> I love that because I like saying that word fool. That's so great. I thought that that, that that was phenomenal. Yeah. You have to add that part. That's the important part. You fools. Yeah, clearly. So, wow. WWF says... It's in its basic sense, the statement is true, except for the last part, which they must obviously be mis mistaken <laughs> about. The Earth's climate <laughs> does go through natural cycles of warming and cooling. Our current warming being experience is completely out of sync with previous cycles. So it is so much more higher. However, and it's big because when people talk about climate change today, they mean anthropogenic man-made climate change. Well, yeah, that's what counts. And this right. is how the Earth's average temperature is warming because of human activities, such as burning coal, oil and gas for energy, and cutting down trees to make way for agriculture. Climate change is currently happening to an extent that cannot be explained by natural factors alone. And global temperatures have been rising for over a century, accelerating in the past 30 years, and are now at the highest that since records began, which we mentioned earlier. So the global scientific community widely agrees that the warming we are experiencing is man-made you fools <laughs> <laughs> hello wwf they clearly are sassy at af like they don't even listen wait a minute so yeah. the last this another ridiculous. misconception i wanted to share which tickled me was uh polar bears have increased their numbers they have obviously benefited from climate change wow okay so this that is can't be true yes exactly this is not true. Climate change is the most serious threat faced by the planet's biggest land-based carnivores. The Arctic is warming roughly twice as fast as the global average, and the sea ice is melting earlier and forming later each year. This makes it more difficult for females to get onto land in late autumn to make their dens and onto the sea ice in spring to feed. In parts of the Arctic, bears are struggling without food for longer than previously. This fasting dramatically reduces 
reduces their body weight, which in turn reduces their chance of surviving the summer season. The loss of sea ice also threatens polar bears' main prey, seals, which depend on sea ice to raise their young and rest. So polar bears are considered vulnerable in the IUCN red list of threatened species between 22,000 and 31,000 remaining in the That's wild. It. And there used to be a lot more, like yeah. even back in the 90s. So it's, and if you've seen online, there's a lot of content around kind of what polar bears are really dealing with and, and how, yeah, emaciated they're looking now. So their numbers are predicted to decline by 30% by the middle of the century as the top predator in the Arctic food chain, it is vital to protect these creatures to ensure that the ecosystem remains balanced. So again, guys, if you think polar bears are having a party, you're clearly a fool. Well, I don't know they're partying with <laughs> since the numbers are dwindling so much. That's I not know. good. Poor boo-boos and chen cheese. Well, I'd like to list the 10 things that this skeptical science.com found about oh, client deniers because they, <laughs> they, they were very interesting things. Mm -hmm. So the first one, climate's changed before. Well, climate reacts to whatever forces it to change at that time. And now hu humans are actually the dominant force. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, it's the sun. In the last 35 years of global warming, sun and climate have been going in opposite directions. <laughs> so it's not the sun, people. Sorry, that's not the answer. Mm-hmm. Some say it's not bad. Negative impacts of global warming on agriculture, health, and environment far outweigh any positives. Like, come on now. <laughs> Getting your little suntan on in the life. heat, right? Get your life. Thinking you can have a longer summer. Okay. Yep, and skin cancer. <laughs> <laughs> so they say there, there's no consensus. 97% uh, of climate experts agree humans are causing global warming. Mm. No consensus? Uh, I don't know. Do your math. There's, now, I, I've heard this one a lot, is that it's the global cooling. Yeah, the last decade, uh, 2000 from 2000 to 2009, was the hottest on record. Uh, number six, models are unreliable. Uh, models successfully reproduce temperatures uh, since 1900 globally by land, in the air, and the ocean. Temperature re records are unreliable. The warming trend is the same in rural and urban areas, measured by thermometers and satellites, people. Number eight, animals and plants can adapt. Well, the polar bears Jesus. obviously aren't, right? Oh Global God. warming will cause mass extinction of species that can't adapt on a short time scale. Mm. Number nine, it has warmed since 1998. Every part of the Earth's climate system has continued warming since 1998, with 2015 shattering the temperature records, like you were saying. You know, it was wow. way off the way off. Yeah. And number 10, Antarctica is gaining ice. Jesus. Well, satellites measure... Antarctica losing land ice at an accelerating rate. So no, <laughs> that is not what's happening. So it seems like climate deniers are just saying some things that are completely false. Maybe they watch that movie that I love that you hate. Remember that where the ice is day freezes. after tomorrow yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. And so they're like, oh, they thought it might be a global cooling because of that. Yeah, that's the, maybe that movie was too impactful. <laughs> maybe <laughs> I love that movie. It's so good. But clearly, scientifically false. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Is global warming linked to extreme weather? So, back to NRDC, they share that scientists agree that the Earth's rising temperatures are fueling longer and hotter heat waves, more frequent droughts, heavier rainfall, and more powerful hurricanes. So to take an example, in 2015, scientists said that an ongoing drought in California, the state's worst water storage in 1,200 years, had been intensified by 15 to 20% by global warming. And they also said the odds of similar droughts happening in the future had roughly doubled over the past century. And then if you go into 2016, the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine announced that it's now possible to confidently attribute certain weather events like some heat waves directly to climate change. Then if you now go to talking about the Earth's ocean temperature, that's also getting warmer, right? So which means that tropical storms can pick up more energy. So global warming could turn, say, a Category 3 storm into a more dangerous Category 4 storm. And in fact, scientists have found that the frequency of North Atlantic hurricanes has increased since the early 1980s, as well as the number of storms that have reached Category 4 and 5. So in 2005, when we had Hurricane Katrina, the co costliest hurricane in U.S. history, struck New Orleans, the second costliest 
Texas, Hurricane Sandy hit the East Coast in 2012, which we mentioned. <laughs> yeah. And the impact of global warming are being felt across the globe with extreme heat waves, which have caused tens of thousands of deaths around the world in recent years. And then in an alarming sign of events to come, Antarctica, like you mentioned, uh, has been losing about 134 billion metric tons of ice per year since 2002. It's a and whole lot of culottes. Word. And if this rate could speed up if we keep burning more uh, fossil fuels at our current pace. So it's, uh, I think, based on that, and again, all of our research you can find on WokenFree.com. Uh, I think based on that, it seems evident that when we look at things like hurricane, these hurricanes we've had, these extreme weathers, that, yeah, it's not happenstance, guys. It's global warming. Like, get with it. <laughs> yeah, what? and then what I also I saw was that many people that are on the coast, they actually, you know, they believe in global warming, but a yeah. lot of the inlanders are not experiencing this increase in natural disasters. Yeah. So that's where most of the client deniers actually are. They're like in the middle of land masses. They're, then they're the people that are the biggest client deniers. So we need to have bus trips to the coastlines? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for they need to actually see these like disasters. Tours, tours of natural disasters. <laughs> like, oh, wow, I didn't know that's how it actually is, yeah. Guys, hold on tight. We're now in the category four. <laughs> Basically, yeah. oh, we got to do like crazy? twister trips and like. <laughs> it's a little bit off base, but there there was a news reporter who pretended he was like in the storm and he wasn't. He was like, "Oh, Disastrous. I'm getting blown away," and then there was this person just walking in the background, Disastrous. just by as he's pretending to be blown away by the winds. <laughs> so Disastrous. some people just use it to their advantage as well. See, and these this is the reason why people are like, "Y'all are out here talking about fake news." Right? Yeah, he's yeah. like, "Guys, it's terrible out here. The wind is extreme. I can hardly best. stand." That is a mess. I hope his station rings. <laughs> Someone's walking for their that. dog. They're just looking at him like, oh, I don't know what this man's doing. <laughs> Maybe he was having a mental breakdown. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Not good timing, uh, man, when you're reporting on a storm. Or maybe he was reenacting uh, Weatherman or something. Like, That's some crazy Weatherman. That's Weatherman <laughs> yeah. 3 or something. I haven't seen that one. I can't. <laughs> Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. So what, so what, so what's the scenario? Scenario 1. Nikki built a boat to visit her home country on the cheap. She packs everything she knows she needs to make the voyage. A few hours after disembarking on the long journey, the weather becomes tumultuous with large pellets of ice raining down on her boat. She sees water gathering and decides to throw her stuff overboard so the boat doesn't sink. Upon throwing the first package, she discovers a small hole letting water in. Was Nikki's voyage doomed from the start, or could she have done anything to prevent this treacherous end? Are you out of your mind, Khalil? <laughs> 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 what kind of question is this? <laughs> You're out of your mind. Does it? You Come on. are completely Come on now. Come on now. Is that even legal? Can you just build your boat <laughs> and just get into water? <laughs> uh, this is in like 1950s Cuba. Like, well, what she went you? to visit her country on the cheap. I don't think that's legal, man. <laughs> like, I think you have to, like, clear that with someone or something. Well, I think you have to contact, like, the Coast Guard yeah, and stuff. Yeah, you can't just get into some bloody boat. And, just... and then I mean, once you go into, like, international waters, yeah, you, you gotta to be careful. Yeah, you have to some type of paperwork or something. <laughs> that's when the issue comes up. I mean, when you're in your home turf, it's okay. But you go, once you cross into you those other waters. You can get in a local lake or something. But come on, man. She didn't have money for the freaking plane well, ticket. Well, then she needed to find a way to make more money to get a plane ticket then. She yes. really wants to visit her family. Oh, well, you need to work towards uh, having more income so that you cannot have to put yourself in shark-infested waters and throw your valuables into the... What? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, this, so, this completely so you think was... think she was doomed from the start? Yes, this, is, this might be illegal. And also, maybe one of the most idiotic things I've heard for the day. <laughs> <laughs> You may be idiotic, but believe you know there's people that try this. Don't even try it. There are people that if try to get boats. We're not talking about immigration issues. We're talking about someone who's like she needed to. She needed guidance. She needs a mentor or a coach or something. But here, yeah. so here's. I know you were jumping on. Should she have even gotten in this boat? But here's here's the point though. Yeah. So, so the boat had a hole in it, and the boat sank. Maybe because of the hole, but actually the weather was bad too. So 
what the question's basically asking even if she didn't have a hole the boat most likely would have sunk and we can all agree on that it's a cheap boat that she built gotcha. so just because she made like the perfect boat that doesn't guarantee her safety so should she have really like could she have done anything to prevent it not really and yeah. the, only, the only reason i bring this up is because this is probably what a climate denier says is like it doesn't matter what we do the, the you know it the earth is going to warm no matter what Glass so should we yeah. <laughs> should we do anything since no matter what we're doomed that uh, that's what this that's what this question sure. was kind of so, linked I into mean, th with that attitude it's like why not just all jump off a bridge right like we're all gonna die anyway so why not die now i mean that that <laughs> argument really doesn't hold up <laughs> in the face of light i think that whatever change you can make no matter how little no matter how small of an effect it is if you can make change then we you can be a change agent and you shouldn't just say just because uh a, some you you may not think it will impact it enough you're not a seer you don't know the future so so make changes don't just sit there and say ah oh, we're all gonna light up in fire anyway so no that i he, so she, even if there's a bigger force at play still you should do you your should best to try to try. you never know what could happen you have to always try you can never give up that's like a life principle that's some good tips for the listeners hopefully uh they'll agree with that and please don't ever do this oh my god <laughs> oh bring duct tape right don't create your own boats and put them in the ocean. <laughs> no, but you you can do that. I just don't be don't go outside of your waters though. Stay within your country's waters. I can't. I'm gonna pray for anyone. Actually, you need to consult like the Coast Guard and make yeah, sure you have it's to within get proper paperwork <laughs> right, well, and get your boat assessed or something, man. Boat assessed. You may need a license for boating depending yeah, on what water you put yeah, it in. I don't so even, like this. Just be very no careful sense with this. To me. But some people build boats for fun, so. Yeah, like little ones that you put on the Central Park uh, waters, right? Yep. No, I've seen a boat made out of duct tape, actually. God bless them. And it actually did float, so Excellent. there goes that. Excellent. Scenario two. Wayne loves driving his old V16 diesel around town because nothing has the sound and smell of a smelly rust bucket. His kids have told him there's a new all-electric sports vehicle that will run circles around his vehicle without angering the neighbors. Should Wayne dump his diesel demon, or should he keep it? Because he's not really hurting anyone, is he? Uh, yes, he's hurting everyone, including the children that he loves. Uh, what he should <laughs> do is definitely get oh, the electric man. car, but he can he can tattoo diesel demon to his arm with <laughs> the picture of his car, and that way he, it's the best of both worlds. Everywhere he goes, he's still got his diesel demon on his arm, and he's saving the environment. Ha! Next. <laughs> I don't think that's going to please a lot of the the gearheads out there who love the sound of that. Do they also love the engine. sound of drowning in their own... <laughs> As like, long as they can hear that sound of the engine with it. And it's going to bring the, er the er end of <laughs> Earth closer, That that's worth it? For some people it is. It's like, never worth not it. Not even joking, there are definitely people who don't want you to take their old school engines away from I them. I understand that, but you know we <laughs> have a obligation as... The, we're part of a global community. I'm not quite sure what it's going to take for people to get this, but we have to think outside of just the realm of our neighborhood or our block. We are a part of a global community, and we owe it to each other. I owe the same responsibility to do and make good choices for Americans, for people in China, for people in India, for people in Australia, everywhere. If you are driving a vehicle that is making the earth... Uh, warm up unnecessarily because you could have a better option. Please take that option. The it's it's the better, best, kinder thing to do. And like I say, tattoo it to your arm. And move on. Well, yeah, it's definitely better than diesel. The yeah, diesel that's doesn't terrible. diesel doesn't I don't even burn understand clean. Why that's offered for anyone other than a trucker? Like, and I understand those trucks run. Well, it, no, but... well, diesel's more efficient. But isn't it horrible for the it's environment? It's very polluting. Yeah. Like, <laughs> even, even the diesels on the road, they have like this special canister that has to capture the gases that you have to replace after a while because the canister gets filled. We've got to... Who's, and who's you know the canister's filled that? with... It's filled with like urine, I think, or ammonia. <laughs> and it captures the is gas. It, is Elon Musk working on this? I mean, because like, he's always solving somebody's well, issues. Well, yeah, he's... I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying he's part of the problem, but these all-electric vehicles aren't available in mass at a affordable price so what yeah we okay <laughs> woken free nation let's put our thinking caps on how can we change out our like in the next 10 years can we replace all of these diesel running op or operated vehicles well, by electric the plan the plan is not to 
replace the electrics as so much to make every car will have to be hybrid by a certain year. Okay, well, yeah, let's do Which that. will definitely help. And the diesels, it's going to have to go. Yeah, like, it's too much. It's not. It's stinks. It's not. Because there's, there's the, like I said, there's the quote-unquote clean diesel that all it does is it captures all the bad, bad pollutants in this little can. But it's still there. It's still, like, messing up. Hot mess. But diesel, it, it's it's efficient. It, it's You could compress it a lot. It's it's great. But don't advocate for it, Kalil. The thing I hate, the, the one I don't like is coal. Like, we need to get rid of those That's coal awful. facilities. And people die in those Coal places. facilities yeah. are pretty bad. Like, don't they get cancer, too, from Yeah, you can't breathe that. that. Like, you can't breathe all that stuff. Coal oh is my bad. Gosh. Coal is not like good. It's a human rights issue, man. I remember there was, like, a fake news purported by uh, this, you know, our current people in office about mm -hmm. uh, clean burning coal. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, was, I remember that. I was like, like um, the not coal? Say what? <laughs> oh, yeah, that. Not coal, not coal. Okay, we see. It's not coal. Kind of like, or what is it like? The um, half truths or? Mm -hmm. No, uh, I forgot. Is that a what red herring called. or? A... No, I'm trying to. I forgot the other word that. Oh, okay. Oh man. Not al not allegory, but um, yeah, you'll remember it. All right. Yeah. Let's just. We'll. we'll I'll come back to that one. <laughs> but there definitely was a. Like a literary term for it, you're saying? No, it wasn't a real term. It was a fake term. Gotcha. Oh, alternative facts. That's what oh, it was. Oh, alternative facts. Yes, that's <laughs> that, yes. There we go. Oh. I knew I, I knew it would come to me. Yeah, alternative facts. Cold, uh, clean burning coal. Out of your mind. <laughs> Out of your it's probably it's people. it's a zero percent fact actually <laughs> to Crazy. be correct. That is Crazy. that's nuts. Come on, guys, let's get it together. Scenario three: Olga has been performing pollution simulations requiring 122.3 petaflops to complete in five years at the end of the run she found that outlawing the use of ice or internal combustion engines used in passenger and commercial vehicles would prevent the greenhouse effect reaching a level that would wipe out the human race along with many other animals do you think world leaders should unite to save humanity from themselves or is it better to just ignore the signs because modern society's way of life would be unsustainable with the elimination of this type of essential engine? Do you even try to speak in English all the time? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like is that even a goal of yours? Come on now. She's doing some Kinda hard... flops? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't even floating think I've operations ever heard second. that in my life. Oh, really? You haven't heard about the floating operations per second? That's how they measure uh, no, supercomputers. No, I haven't. That's the speed of supercomputers, how fast they can do those calculations. Phenomenal. So hundred, the number is special. People can find out why. Okay. Look up your 122.3 petaflops and you'll see. Who holds the title? Get your life. Uh. So she's using this supercomputer <laughs> to do her calculations. That's the point of it. Okay. Which took five gotcha. years still to complete. See how you could have said that in English too? Okay, excellent. No, but you you see how long it took though? Five years for the for that powerful of a computer. Gotcha. Peta flaps is a lot. Peta. So your question is, do you think world leaders should come together for a human... Uh, the future of humanity versus just saying, eh, we're all just, let's just live how we like it because it's easier. Yeah. Uh, should they outlaw the things that keep life going as it is now? Or should they, uh -huh. or should they just say, you know what, if we do this, it's going to ruin a lot of people's lives. So we can't outlaw this engine. We just going to have to deal with the effects. If you've gone through this entire podcast and it's not clear to you what the answer is, I like give up because... <laughs> I know you. I know. For us, it probably seems real simple, and for some people, it's like, oh, easy. This is an easy one. I mean, at believe the it or not, people. A lot of people don't want to give up their way of life, though. They're like, you know what? I'm gonna be gone in 50 years. I don't care. <laughs> like, some there's a lot. There's a lot of people that think yeah, like that. Yeah, I understand, but I mean, I would say, or, or, that... or they don't even want to go through the hardships that are, that'll come along with losing like our essential means of manufacturing and stuff. <laughs> I mean, I think that ultimately, and transportation, again, actually. What, what, are, what is your intention? Are you here to live for you and you alone and not consider the uh, impact you're having in, on, the, on this global world? Or, uh, you know, you have to decide where, where do you stand on that? So for me, I'm a fan of saying that I'm a part of a global community no matter what. And so, yes, you, we as we our world leaders have to come together and try to figure this out. And I, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for us to work together for the future of mankind. I think that that if you're not willing to save people, then what are you living 
looking for. I mean, and at bare minimum, guys, it's not just people too. It's also animals. If you're a fan, I, that breaks my heart. These polar bears out here struggling in these streets. That's crazy. So <laughs> save, this, save the bears. This would mean that a lot of the flights would be canceled too because airplanes and are using where are we doing more jet fuel. like alternative ways of communication and VR and yeah, all that that's, stuff is going to pick up. All that so, would have to yeah, increase. We're, gonna have because... to, we're just going to have to change our ways as to how we communicate and how we consume content and exchange content this would wipe out transportation as you know it yeah i mean there's google maps there's you know there's things we can see things it's we'll figure it out second guys. day shipping uh-oh you thought that was here to stay yeah i mean that <laughs> the that can go away all these things would go but away maybe it becomes four day shipping and that's not that big of a deal i mean for the greater good of humanity i think i think we you can, can make give that, that up sacrifice. you'll be able to give up your two day shipping i just love amazon just the option to buy so quickly i mean the weather because it comes here in two days or not i can order quickly at two days or a week you're okay with the week i think so i think for the greater the good of reasonable. humanity for sure because yeah they'd have to start bundling things together to start winding this down absolutely yeah, you know, I'll take the hardships because I think it's better for humanity to go on. Like, let's not be so short-sighted, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just to enjoy the... Gotta save the bears. The <laughs> I would enjoy... Bears. I, would, I would enjoy those little moments I have. No, you need to have... Do you want humanity to continue? I mean, I guess if you don't care, then, wow, you're kind of a heartless person. But a lot of no people judgment. are like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, screw humanity. You know, I gotta have my freaking free one day shipping what's up guys like that's crazy come it's on now life. <laughs> i think mean, you're just like the demon you're you're some type of demon Ooh, i guess right nice nice because that's no his best stuff he's throwing shade to say way. your way of life is more important than all of humanity that's pretty funny it just seems really i mean i don't think me. people would be willing to make that statement but i think that they do that's how they'd act now. yeah they'll yeah. act that way you're like i don't care <laughs> you know? yeah that, that, that's best, though. Come on, guys. Get it together. Absolutely. So we are at that time again. It is coming to the end of our 56th episode of Woke, Woke and, and Free. Free. Really, Kalil? That was good, Natasha. You did really well this time. Yes. I applaud you. You lost your testosterone in that moment. <laughs> One does not lose testosterone. Uh, yes, when I have to absorb it for you. <laughs> ah, nice. you are not observant, young one. Is that your Star Wars impersonation? <laughs> Is that what we're going with right now? <laughs> that That's my old Kung Fu master wow, impersonation. Wow, it's really confusing. So now you're a master in space? Is that what we were going with? No, there was no space involved. Oh, okay, because it sounded like you were like, <laughs> talking I'm about... I'm like in a space suit and doing <laughs> like, some like, karate chops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, is my air karate chop on the moon sounds like future bloopers to me yeah well uh, <laughs> actually being on the moon and doing it that's the next blooper we're gonna do this on the moon come on guys oh goodness gracious catch us on google maps uh, clearly i think there might be a google maps of the rover on the moon i think there might be actually. that's amazing yeah i, I think there is <laughs> i don't yeah i, I forgot you. how they had it but <laughs> it might be Oh man, this was quite the episode talking all about the real impact and effects of global warming. And as always, will I leave you hanging for what our next episode will be all about? Drum roll, please. On our next episode, we will be talking with the founder of the podcast, Brunch Club. So make sure you follow us on social media to follow along in the conversation. And make sure you tune in next week for Woken Free Wednesday to join the conversation at WokenFree.com. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please submit a topic for an upcoming episode on WokenFree.com. That's our Contact Us page. You're going to find us on www.WokenFree.com. Okay, so W-O-K-E-N-F-R-E-E.com. No excuses, guys. And then, of course... Hit us up on social media. Always feel free to find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Woken Free. If you didn't already subscribe, please do. Share the episode and make sure you come back to join the conversation every Wednesday for Woken Free Wednesdays. Remember, Woken Free is more than a podcast. It is a way of life. Until next time.